G'day there everyone, Daniel Anderson here. Welcome to this edition. Now today we're again going to be focusing on SharePoint and it is a little bit of SharePoint 101. We're going to bring in Microsoft Teams into the conversation as well. We're going to take a look at how Microsoft Teams integrates with SharePoint and a SharePoint team site, as well as when we would use a SharePoint team site as opposed to a SharePoint communication site. So we can think of Microsoft Teams and the team uh, site that's backing that Microsoft team as a place where we go to do our work. It's our workspace. But then we've also got and maybe have a communication site as well to be able to communicate what we're doing and give uh, access to resources to people across the entire organization. So that is going to be the focus of today's video. Let's get stuck into it. So let's start at the Microsoft team level. So a Microsoft team is a place where a group of people, a functional group, a department, a project team, any group of people come together to achieve a particular outcome. It's a place where they communicate, it's a place where they share and collaborate on documents or files, and it's a place where they can extend the functionality of that team or group by the use of tabs across the top of any given channel. Now, talking about channels, we've got a default general channel that gets provisioned and created for every single new team that uh, is created. Now, we can obviously add additional channels to that team, and that is a good practice to start to do, because what we don't wanna get into a situation of is that we just are left with a single general channel, and we've got all of our communication being done in a single location, and that also means in the files tab here, we've got all of our files in this one files tab. And then we need to structure things and uh, do that inside of that one tab. Now, a good way to uh, break things out into different streams or topics is by creating different channels. And you can see on the left-hand side here, we've got a people and culture team. It has got 12 people that are part of that people and culture team. It's where these 12 people go to do their work. It's where they share documents. It's where they collaborate on things. It's where they talk to each other. It's where they create, um, create the content. Now, you can see I've got an employee experience channel, an employee onboarding channel, a ways of working channel, and every team member is treated equally. So they're all a member of this team. They can communicate, they can uh, start a post, and they can upload files. Now, how does this relate to SharePoint? Well, behind or backing in every single Microsoft team is a SharePoint site. So I mentioned before about this files tab here. Now, every time or when we upload documents or create documents inside of a channel, we upload them or add them to the files tab. Now, they're actually not stored in Microsoft Teams itself, but it's stored in SharePoint in a document library behind this Microsoft team. So if I upload some documents, and let me go ahead and do that right now. So I'll just click files. Let's find some, uh, some demo documents here and we can upload some demo documents into, uh, into this uh, tab here in the files tab, we're on the general channel. That's, they're uploading into, uh, into in the background, uh, into a, a document library in SharePoint. So we can see that these have, have been uploaded and we've got the confirmation there, and we can see them in the, uh, in the files tab. But what you'll notice here we've got a breadcrumb here. So we've got documents and then we've got general because we're in the general channel. Now, what to just to show you how this integrates, we can open this in SharePoint. Now, as I said, every single Microsoft team is backed by this SharePoint site. Now, every single SharePoint site, when it gets created, has this location or library called documents. Now, that's where all of our files are stored. It's in a SharePoint site in a document library. Now you'll also see that we've got these folders that have been automatically created for me. Now these folders directly relate 
to the channels that are inside of Microsoft Teams. So we can see general, employee experience, employee onboarding, ways of working. If I jump over to the SharePoint site for people and culture, and remembering this is the people and culture team, we can see that by the top right hand corner where we've got 12 members of this team. So it's not a uh, an all company intranet type of scenario, it's where these 12 people go to do their work. And we'll get to an intranet scenario in just a second. You'll also see that we've got this Teams icon here. So this indicates that this is actually a team or a group of people. Now in here, you can see these folders, same structure here, employee experience, employee onboarding, general ways of working. Now, if I go into the general channel, you can see those exact same files are located here. It's just a different access point, a, dish, a different way of accessing those files. Now I can do the same thing with our files here. So I can, uh, inside of the SharePoint site here, inside of this general folder, I can do the same thing, right? So I can add files from this interface here. So we're talking about SharePoint here. So I'm gonna drag and drop these files directly across into, uh, into the browser here. And what we'll notice is that these, these documents will actually get uploaded into the, uh, this general folder. You can see in the top right hand corner, uploading, it's now available, it's uploaded. Now when I jump back into Microsoft Teams, what we'll see in just a second is that that document has also now been, uh, is now accessible via the files tab. Now if I go to employee experience, okay, again, same team, people and culture, same 12 people have got access. We're in a different channel. We've got a files tab inside of this channel, but it's empty, right? Because we don't have any files. If I go back to the SharePoint site now, I go to documents, I go to uh, employee experience, and it's empty. We've got no files there. So I can go new folder, uh, and let's go create a new folder here. Let's call that experience. That's created a new folder. I'm doing it from SharePoint. When I jump back into Microsoft Teams, you'll see in just a second what will happen is that folder will be accessible by, uh, through the files tab of the employee experience channel. Same thing, I can inside of Teams, I can create a folder inside of the inside of Teams, and that is going to be directly represented inside of that same folder in SharePoint. So that will appear there, even though I created it in Microsoft Teams. So that is how the integration works from a files perspective. All of our files that we upload or collaborate on or work together on inside of Microsoft Teams here is actually being stored in our own special SharePoint team site that is only accessible at the moment by people, by these 12 members, all right? Now that also, because we've got a SharePoint team site, we've got the ability to create pages and things like that as well. So you can see here, we've actually got a home page for this people and culture team. So the, the use case here for this team site is that we can have the capabilities to also create pages and news articles or updates if we want to, to share just with our team. Now we can integrate that SharePoint site into our team. If I go into the general channel, and this is where I was speaking about how we can extend the functionality of Microsoft Teams here. You can see that I've got this new tab or this additional tab here called PNC with a little house emoji. Now when I click on that, you can see that I have brought in my homepage for this people and culture team. And again, I'll just reiterate, this is only accessible by those 12 members of the people and culture team. It's where we go to keep each other updated. It's where we go to communicate with, with the team. It's where we share and we collaborate on our documents. So we can create and extend the functionality of our team here by utilizing uh, this tab infrastructure in each channel. Each channel can have its own tabs um, and then we can have a different experience specific to the channel that we're in. Now we also have this concept of an intranet. Now that's a little bit different, right? So we've got this people and culture team and that's specifically for that group of people, a unit of work, a project or an initiative that we're working on. 
Now, what about when we need to communicate with across the organization? So everybody needs access to certain things that we are creating in this team. The output of that might be a document, might be an update, um, and it might be uh, something that needs to be consumed by the rest or the entire organization. That's where our people and culture or HR communication site comes into play. It's for communicating stuff or things to the rest of the organization. Now we can see here, it looks a lot different than that of a team site because we're not talking about teamwork here. We're talking about communicating or making resources and things available to the rest of the organization. Now, everyone across the company uh, would have read access to this and there, there might be certain groups of people that have uh, edit rights that, that can maintain the content and create stuff inside of this SharePoint communication site called Contoso HR. This SharePoint site is completely separated from that team site that we use amongst our team. But it's still a SharePoint site. It's still got a document library, it's still got pages, and it's still got news items or updates that we can, uh, that we can make available to everybody. Now, if I take uh, the example here on the right-hand side, we've got some links to common things that people come to HR for across the company. We need to find some tax forms. We need to take a leave of absence. How do we actually go about doing that? Well, we can utilize this communication site to provide um, examples and provide how-to guides or videos or instructions on how people actually take uh, a leave of absence. We can prepare for a new job. We can find out what our insurance options are. If I keep scrolling down the page here, We've got our own events here. So we might want to publish uh, certain events or things that are happening from our from the people and culture side to the rest of the organization. We've got information about compensation, careers, and all the benefits that we've got as part of as being a, a, an employee of our company. We've got some other quick links or dashboard type items here by topics, by roles or other topics, um, access to the people and culture policies and procedures, or things like uh, learning about the company culture and things like that. So we can see that this is still SharePoint. It's a SharePoint communication site for our, our HR department or our people and culture department, but it's not where we go to do our work. It's where we go and communicate to the rest of the organization um, important things or things that they need to know or they need to have access to. It's not where we go to do our work. That place where we go to do our work is our Microsoft team or to access files, we can go directly to the actual SharePoint team site that is back, backing that Microsoft team as well. Okay, so we don't actually store our files there in, in Teams. We store our files inside of the SharePoint site that sits behind that Microsoft team. We can access it through SharePoint. We can even synchronize our documents. Now I'm talking about documents only here. So if you're, um, familiar and used to using File Explorer, then we can also add a shortcut to these files and this document library to our OneDrive for Business, for example. So we can then access the file content directly from File Explorer and don't have to come into the browser then to navigate and find our files. It depends on, on how you want to um, how you want to access that content, whether it's through Teams and the Files tab in our channels, whether it's through the SharePoint interface, or whether it's through File Explorer will determine uh, how you set things up as well. But a great way to utilize that SharePoint site is to bring and extend our channels here by by utilizing the uh, the tabs infrastructure. So if we're, util if we're using as a team, we wanna keep everybody part of our team updated on things, we might use the news functionality of that team site, okay? We might want to then add that functionality and add that page or a news page into our Microsoft Teams. So we don't have to leave Teams to stay updated and consume what's happening inside of our team. So we can use the SharePoint tab and click to pages and go to news. We can add our page here and then that's going to add a news page or a news tab to our team and our general channel. And we can see here, we've got nothing published yet, but when we start to publish some content 
as part of our team, then that will appear here. You also saw that we can extend on that and we might have videos that we want the people of our uh, of our team to access and consume as well. You can see on the pages, we've now got a video page that we can also add as a tab inside of that team as well. So a couple of different things there that we can extend and enhance the team experience for the 12 people that are members of this team. And again, I'll jump back to the communication site. We've got a similar functionality here. We can go new, we can go news post, and remembering that this is broadcasting and everybody's got access to this. It's a way for us to communicate out across the rest of the organization. So I hope that brings you some value today. Uh, the combining of Microsoft Teams and SharePoint and also the addition of a communication-based site as well really does create uh, an amazing platform to be able to not only work together as a group of people, but also communicate what we're doing and giving access to resources that people across the company need access to. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next edition.